Account Supply Calculator Okay Let's go, we're not expert, we're gonna go to basic Let's do it, desktop, yep We've got a 3950X And we've got two 8GB modules And we've got an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Storage, one SSD Let's calculate Oh! Recommended SU wattage 521 watts Low wattage 471 watts Well let's drop that down 21 watts and see if we can run this setup Power supplies, they can be a funny thing where I'd say a lot of the time people often buy a lot more than they actually need. And here's a true story. I had one person buying a GTX 1050 Ti system office about a year ago and they said, look Brian, I want to get a 1000 watt power supply in this system. And now I had a 400 watt power supply in there and in fact even 400 watts is generally even too much for a GTX 1050 Ti and like a 4 core. But they requested I put a 1000 watt power supply in this system and my response was dude you do not need anywhere near that amount of power in this system and in fact you're just wasting your money and then after I explained things to them they were thankful that I was trying to save them money however when it comes to power supplies those ratings that we see 1000 watts 500 watts 600 watts for example they're max ratings of the power supply itself and its ability to deliver up to that number in watts to your system. It's actually an irrelevant number to what your system will actually be using in real time wattage. And to understand this figure and what power supply you need, generally you can get an idea from that based on the system components you're using. So for instance, in the intro, we're using a 3950X and also an RTX 2080 Ti. These are generally considered high-end components and with that, high-end components generally use more power than the average mid-range part. Say for instance, an RTX 2060 and a Ryzen 5 3600 will use a lot less power than what we're using in today's video. However, for an experiment from here in, we're going to be coupling these components, the RTX 2080 Ti and the 3950X with a 450 watt power supply, which honestly, I don't recommend anyone at home ever do this. It is a little bit low in my standards for these components and what they do require. I'd say a 650 watt power supply is what you should be aiming for with these two components here today. But for science, I wanna see if this Cooler Master MWE 450 holds up for the job and if it actually does, then for how long will it hold up for? Let's find out. And the 450 watt power supply is starting up okay, but that's only a small part of the equation. We're now gonna run a Cinebench test and see if the CPU shows no signs of hiccups while we're doing this, and hopefully it doesn't. 8,607 points, looks all right to me. So Cinebench R20 is just a quick test on the CPU, and of course, we wanna be stressing that 2080 Ti. So we're now gonna run the second tier test here, and that is Unigine Heaven. We're gonna leave this on for actually a good two hours, and then we'll come back with a few more benchmarks if it passes this test. <laughs> So we've now been running Heaven for quite a while and this whole setup here is passing absolutely fine. 
with the 450 watt power supply. Now, from the wall, we're using a little over 400 watts, so there's still plenty of headroom. And one thing about Heaven is it doesn't stress the CPU a whole lot. So what we're gonna do now is jump into a game like F1 2019 and quickly boot it on a loop cycle and benchmark this thing and leave it overnight to see if it's geared up towards playing games. But before we do that though, I will quickly run an MSI Combustor benchmark, which is a little bit more strenuous than Heaven to see if we can get any weaknesses out of this 450 watt power supply. Because one thing I'm noticing now, even with this load with the 2080 Ti at the moment, this thing is still breathing out like cool air. So the power supply is not really getting stressed, even with the 2080 Ti being loaded up in Heaven. So let's keep running through these benchmarks. Da -ba -da -ba the 450 is still okay. So upon waking up, I was met with a scenario that I never expected, and that is the game crashed out and then it was like there was no error message at all. And usually when a power supply is at fault, it'll either give you an error message because the GPU won't be getting enough power, for example, or the system will shut off due to a safety circuit in the power supply itself. So this weird scenario of the game just sort of just crashing to the desktop and not even giving an error message, was really unexpected. I was hoping that it would have this picture perfect time lapse where we had it benchmarking as the sun came up, but that wasn't meant to be. But I'll still show you guys the B roll of the sun coming up anyway with the computer asleep. Though, from what I could tell, this 450 watt power supply was doing an okay job of handling the latest and greatest 2080 Ti and a 16 core 3950X for quite a few hours on end. Now, this isn't to say go out and buy a 450 watt power supply with a 16 core and a 2080 Ti. That's not the message of this video. And in fact, I'd say the website that we used at the start got it right on the money. You'd wanna get around a 550 watt power supply or better and make sure it's from a really good brand. I can't stress that enough. There's a few good power supply makers out there, but there's also really bad power supply makers that will lie about how many watts their power supplies can deliver. So basically when it comes to buying a power supply, the biggest thing you can look for is that rating on the side. Look for the 12V and then underneath it, look how many amps it can run in relation to that power supply. So for instance, this 450 watt power supply virtually had 450 watts available through that 12 volt line, which means that it's a decent power supply to begin with. For instance, if you see a 550 watt power supply, but it really only has, say for instance, 18 amps with the 12 volt rating, then you know it's going to be absolute garbage. And I would avoid that like something I know out there at the moment that's causing massive shipping delays. Anyway, the biggest thing to come out of today's video is that there's going to be a lot of people out there that are wanting to spend a lot more money than they should on a power supply that they don't need. For instance, the guy in the intro who asked about a 1000 watt power supply with the GTX 1050 Ti, that's just going to be money wasted where it could be better spent on upgrading things like the graphics card and also the CPU. So going out and buying one of these power supplies that is just simply overdone for your particular build is something to look out for, especially if you want to get the most price performance. And so the funny thing about it is, is that website that we used at the start of the video, I found to be very accurate and very reliable. And so what you wanna do is calculate what components you wanna put in your build, and then this will give you a pretty accurate and good recommendation for what power supply you should be looking for. Now, another thing on top of that is that if you want to overclock, then you should provision an extra few hundred watts on your build because overclocking your CPU, your graphics card, and even your RAM, for example, that can really take things 
way out of what's known as the efficiency curve, where the more you're trying to find the limits of your hardware, you're actually going to use an exponential amount of power in order to try and get to those levels. So basically out of the box, a lot of the times, your hardware is gonna be running at its sweet spot. Anyway, with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And we've also got the question of the day, which comes from Adam Mills. And they ask, will someone give me an honest answer? Is the 7973 gigabyte edition Sapphire Vapor better than the GTX 670 WinForce apart from the extra watts consumed? And the answer is gonna be yes. The 7970 should be faster than the GTX 670 especially in 2020. And it's also got that extra one gigabyte of VRAM on board, which at 1080p gaming is going to be pretty crucial for a lot of newer titles coming out. So I would definitely go with that over the 670. However, since I do flip PCs, Nvidia cards do sell a lot better in terms of resale. So it depends on what you wanna do. Personal use, I'd go with the 7970. If I was going to flip the PC, I'd be going with the 670. There's my advice to you. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, make sure you hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the tech videos as soon as they drop here at Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you on the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.